Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for July 14, 2011, reporting on the latest news in the auto industry today. And General Motors has really ticked off at Volkswagen. Specifically, GM is accusing VW's CEO, Martin Winterkorn, of fanning speculation that Opel is up for sale. Winterkorn is quoted in a German newspaper saying that a Chinese automaker would be the most likely buyer for Opel. GM released a statement reprimanding Winterkorn for his comments and said it will continue to support Opel and is pleased with the progress in turning the company around. Since 1999, GM has lost $14.5 billion in Europe. When the current generation Sonata came out, Hyundai's management in Korea was not happy with the design, saying it was too radical. They said the next generation of the car needed to be more conservative, but that was before the car started rocketing up the sales charts. John Kraftchuk, the head of Hyundai's North American operation, says they ain't gonna do no conservative design. According to Wards, Kraftchuk says that that would be a big mistake. In the U.S., sales of the Sonata are up nearly 30% this year, and demand is so high it has the lowest incentives in its segment. You know, there's different ways of measuring quality. The best known studies like J.D. Power and Consumer Reports measure things that go wrong on a car. But a company called Strategic Vision measures things gone right. This includes things like the overall ownership ex experience, including the performance and driving pleasure. And that explains why Volkswagen was rated the best manufacturer by Strategic Vision, whereas it's usually near the bottom of the list on the other rankings. Other manufacturers that score well are Ford, Nissan, Honda, as well as Jaguar and Land Rover. Here's my AutoLine insight. Strategic Vision has got it right. Just counting defects, especially insignificant ones, is a limited way to measure how good a car really is. The overall experience is a much better measurement. Even though the merger mania craze in the auto industry has slowed down, it's still going on. Automakers are constantly on the lookout of ways that they can cut costs, even if that means cooperating with a competitor, what they call coopetition. The latest example involves Mitsubishi making a Nissan pickup, the Navara, at a plant in Thailand. The two companies already make mini cars together in Japan. But why a pickup in Thailand? Because Thailand is the second largest market in the world for pickups outside of the United States. Like the nose on your face, the size of A pillars is always growing. The federal government is toughening up roof strength and rollover standards so engineers have to bulk up roof supports. But while roofs are stronger, the side effect is that these A-pillars block your view, especially in vehicles with low roof lines like the Chevy Camaro. A study performed by the University of Michigan for NHTSA said that 87% of subjects reported visibility problems with A-pillars. But all's not lost. Some manufacturers have actually been able to reduce the girth of their A-pillars with better design and ultra high strength steel. The 2012 Honda Civic has an A-pillar 9% smaller than its predecessor, while the redesigned Dodge Charger and Chrysler 300 improved visibility 15%. While Americans may complain about feeding the parking meter a few dollars a day, motorists in other worldly cities have it a lot worse. In the heart of London, drivers average $1,090 a month, while in Zurich, Switzerland, they average $822. In Hong Kong, they rang up $744 for parking fees, according to Bloomberg. Stateside, Manhattan took the top spot at $541. By the way, a month's worth of train tickets in New York costs about $443. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at what could be the most dramatic improvement in automotive safety that's coming soon, thanks to 
breakthrough technology. I got this one, old man. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. They call it V2V technology, vehicle to vehicle. Using GPS and a modified Wi-Fi system, automakers are enabling cars to talk to one another, and that can prevent them from occupying the same space at the same time, i.e. preventing them from crashing into one another. We recently spent some time at Ford's research labs and spoke with Michael Schulman, a technical leader at Ford Research. I started out by asking him, what's the promise? of V to V. Uh, the promise of V to V is enormous. Just because it's really low cost technology, NHTSA estimates it could address 82% of all vehicle to vehicle crashes involving unimpaired drivers. And um, you know, we just think it's the next big breakthrough in safety. When you talk low cost, you really got my attention. So I asked Michael Schulman, what kind of hardware are you talking about and why is it low cost? Automotive radar is built off of, you know, some really specialized technology and the volumes are so low that, you know, it might be a $1,200 option to get a forward-looking radar in your car. Here we're basically looking at a version of Wi-Fi together with GPS and the sync systems we already have include basic Wi-Fi and GPS. So adding this on, it's built off of commercial technology that, and that's why we think it's so low cost. And just in case we missed anything, I asked him, what else should we know about V to V? Um, the other thing that you know we we usually like to say is that uh, we want people to kind of feel comfortable that these systems are going to be in their car. It's not going to be invading their privacy to track them where they're going. It's not going to be for enforcing speeding laws and giving them tickets. It's it's going to be to provide that extra vigilant set of eyes and ears to kind of understand what's going on around you and even better than a passenger because. You can, the car can see up vehicles ahead, it can see, you know, even when there's blocking, so it can warn you, but in a way that, you know, people should be comfortable and uh, just as a, as a next generation safety system. So the idea is that it only works when your vehicle is equipped and other vehicles are equipped. So we're working to other car makers to get everybody, all new vehicles equipped and then trying to develop a kit that we can put in existing vehicles to retrofit them so that all vehicles will be able to join this conversation as quickly as possible. You know, I love the fact that this technology could have a dramatic impact on safety, that it's available at low cost, that it can be retrofitted to older cars, and that this technology is right around the corner. Good stuff. Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for AutoLine After Hours when our guest will be Jack Telnack, the former head of design for the Ford Motor Company. We'll have a great discussion of where car design is headed these days. That's tonight on AutoLine After Hours, and that's today's show for the top news in the industry. How does 12 million impressions grab you? Get your advertising message in front of the most engaged automotive consumers in the world. Call me, Stacy Eman, at 586-255-1364.